welcome to Stitches and Sundries. My name is Lauren. You can find me on Instagram at Lauren Up Stitching. And we're doing something a little different today. So usually I would record my floss tube episode and talk about cross stitch. However, today I am doing a little bit of paper craft. And I mentioned on my last episode that I wanted to do more of this stuff. And so today we're doing a floss book. I have a bunch of new people that have uh, recently joined the channel and I hope this is something you find interesting and for everybody else that's been here I hope this is the best of both worlds so the book I have in front of me is one that I already made in the past and it's completely handmade uh, I made the covers and decorated it and it is a super simple fun craft that you can use up lots of your stickers on as you can see as I'm flipping through it here it is covered in decorations and stickers. It's just held together by a couple of jump rings and it is full of floss away bags. I am a crazy person and like to tape my floss away bags so that they can be opened from the book so I don't have to keep taking them out to open them. Uh, that is not necessary. Floss away bags come with a hole. It's super easy to just pop them in, but I'm a crazy person and so I do the tape. The tape just reinforces the holes a little bit so they don't rip. It takes five seconds, but not everybody needs to do that. So as you can see, the, it holds many bags. You can get bigger jump rings to hold even more bags if you're you know, a collector of flosses. Uh, I eventually would like to have these to store my DMC threads, but that would be multiple books and it seems a little nuts. So maybe not. The uh, so I'm just gonna show you the back cover here. One thing that's different about this is I'm trying to do a voiceover. There were a bunch of people in my house at the time I recorded this, so I couldn't get clean audio, And uh, but I figured I could try it this way, so I might not always line up perfectly. Um, I love that octopus sticker, it's so cute, and it fit the like sea theme of this book. I don't always go in with theme, I have a bunch that are just like random, but I did try and have a theme today, tried to have my stuff together to film, and look how cute that is. It's the perfect size as well. Fits in a drawer, it's out of the way. So I'm making a book to hold a couple of specialty threads that I got from a stitchy box that my sister got me last year, as well as one that I ordered from Be Stitch Me. And so I just need a book to hold a couple extra threads. So I'll be making that with you today. And they're so pretty. Look how beautiful those colors are. All right, so let's get these things cleaned up and we'll take a look at what you will need to make one of these. So the first thing you will need is a couple of jump rings for the bind, basically to hold it together, binds the two covers. Uh, I'm using an inch and a half. You can get these in multiple colors. I just buy them off Amazon. Links for everything will be in the description. You will also need some chipboard or cardboard, something to make the covers sturdy. They are, I'm using medium weight chipboard. I recently went to the Oddities Expo in Pittsburgh and this came in the back of a bunch of prints, so I have plenty of it. You can also find it on the backs of notebooks um, and you can buy it online, I'll, I'll link it again. There are lots of options and any of it will work. Also need some Velcro. I happen to have these Velcro tabs and they are perfectly good for what I need. You can just also just buy a roll of Velcro. You'll also need a knife or some heavy duty scissors if you're more comfortable with scissors and some glue. I really like this Craft Bond extra strength glue. Um, it works really well for me as long as I catch all my edges and doesn't seem to have any problem. I also have this art glitter glue, which I don't think I end up using, but it is there. It is also a great, really fast drying glue. Um, some fussy cut scissors if you're cutting out small things. And um, super glue just in case. I do end up using it a little bit for the closure. Um, I can also recommend, I don't think I show it here, but you are going to need um, a ribbon or something to close the book. 
as well, of course, as all your beautiful uh, papers. So let's go ahead and look at what I've kind of pulled together based on the theme that I'm kind of thinking, which is um, the theme I'm thinking is architectural or industrial um, vintage. So it's a theme I've really liked a lot lately. I've actually did um, something else with it and it's just a really interesting like all the math and the gears and the, the like graft lines really speaks to me in some way. Uh, so I really like these. These are from the Tim Holtz backgrounds. Um, as you can see, they definitely meet the theme and I picked these up. My local Joann's the only place to buy like crepe paper craft supplies and they usually carry the backgrounds. And so I really like these um, they're the perfect size for a lot of my projects to just, you know, make a page in my stitching journal or make one of these floss books. So I definitely really like those. So grabbed a couple of those. Um, these are from a paper pack that my sister got me and I have no idea where she got it from. And uh, yeah, they still got that, that like architectural or mathematical quality that I'm trying to go for. The telescope and globe, the sextant up there in the corner, like machine. You can kind of see the vibe I'm going for. You can see what I'm doing, trying to do here. I am just noticing that every time I touch the table, it shakes the camera a little bit. So it might be a little shaky. I plan to work on that, but my setup is a little strange. Like I said, there are a bunch of people in the house moving around too, so. Um, but we're getting through it. We're strapped in, we're gonna get it done. So here is another awesome piece that I found just the other day at a thrift, local thrift store. And it is such an awesome book. It is a career book or a little bit of everything. It was like news and career advice and how to fix your home. Uh, and it has such cool advertisements and uh, cool little interesting bits. And I'll show you the page that grabbed my attention so much. Uh, I love that muscle guy. And look, it's already grungy. It's already vintagey. You don't have to mess with it too much if that is the style you're going for. These pictures are just so good. It's definitely full of interesting little articles and really cool. Look at that space car. That's so neat. And so when I saw this, I like knew I had to have it. Um, this is the page that grabbed my attention the most, like the color and the like epicness of it in this weird journal about cars and there's a, a thing about making your own flying cart. Like you can't beat it. This was such a cool find for $3. Uh, so I was really pleased with that. And all the schematics are perfect for what I'm looking to do um, with the mathematical vintage vibe. Um, and there's the how to make a boat and I'm definitely gonna pull some of those like plans. Um, So I also have a bunch of free printables from various places. So this one is from uh, Vintage Glam and she offers a ton of free printables and I'm definitely going to use that center tag there. Uh, just for some dimension, backgrounds, things like that. Uh, this tag is from Paper Pegasus, and she also offers freebies. She goes out and finds vintage pieces. 
This one is also from Paper Pegasus. I love that woman in the right with the globe and the compass and like it's so she finds these like vintage things and does high quality scans and they're just so interesting and neat uh, so she's got a lot of freebies on her website as well um, these are printables from seven plaza here on YouTube and she does a ton of stuff on her Kofi store Kofi store uh, so she has a lot of freebies and then like bigger packs um, that you can purchase and support her. She is super creative. She's a, I watch her all the time for inspiration. And yeah, so there's some cool stuff on here of, again, like maths and graphs and that compass in the corner is very cool. So I like this a lot I think it'll match what I'm looking for and these are just some labels that I am totally uh, always need labels and then this one is super cool this is a schematic from a model train kit that my sister got me for Christmas last year and I built up the kit I loved every minute of it they're super fun fun they're from uh, the R duck store on Etsy and they come with the schematic and I need this so that is perfect for our architectural drawing, mechanical drawing theme that we're going for. And then I'll also pull from my general stash of things that are already pre-cut, stickers, ephemera, everything that I've kind of gathered and we'll kind of look through that together and come up with this idea as we go of what we're putting together here. So let me gather all this stuff out of the way. and we'll get started here. We have an idea, we have stuff to pull from, and we're gonna do really well. So I'm just gonna take apart this book that I already made. I'm going to use it as a guide to just trace. However, you probably don't already have one of these made, so I will get the measurements up here after I get it marked out. So, like I said, I'm gonna trace here. This book is the perfect size for me to fit in a drawer. It fits perfectly and is um, fine. So my book ended up being, you couldn't quite see it there because I'm still learning where to put it in frame. It ended up being five inches by six and a quarter for, uh, to completely cover the floss books and, and have a good decent sized cover. So I'm just gonna trace it out here. And if I had a corner rounder, I would just cut this square and round it with a corner, uh, a corner rounder thing. It would be super convenient, but I don't. So I am going to cut it with my exacto knife and then trim up those corners um, and I'm just gonna fast forward through this because I have that power while I'm videoing And then I'm just going to cut off the corners here carefully with my X-Acto knife. Like I said, we went up to the Oddities Expo in Pittsburgh last weekend. And we had a ton of fun. And found several pieces. So now I have lots of backing off of prints and so I've been needing to make a floss book for a while uh, that I've had those two packs laying on my dresser for a bit and so I was like well this is the perfect opportunity to get this all out and done so you can see I'm using a pair of heavy duty scissors just to trim up those corners so they look actually rounded versus uh, nubby and I still haven't figured out exactly where the camera should be. 
I think I fix it later, but. And I'm just gonna repeat this for the second half. So I'm gonna pop through this real quick. And boom, now I have two. So uh, this one's a little fuzzy from the way I cut it, but that'll clean up. And now I have both pieces ready for the book. Super easy, super simple. I am not gonna start and uh, punch my holes yet because we're going to cover them with paper and so we'll wanna punch through all of that at once. So now comes the really fun part. Now comes decorating. So let's take a look at what we've got here. I think I really like this background. I think the columns are really cool. I think the color is light. Yeah, and I think this woman with the globe really has that Greek vibe. So I think putting those two together will be really cool. So I knew I really wanted her on this book. Like I loved her. So. But I also am looking and seeing a lot of beige on beige. So I think we're definitely going to need some color. So I'm going to go ahead and cut her out really quick and um, trim off that little bit of uh, like paper edge. Um, so I'll be right back. All right. So there we go. And yeah, we definitely need some more color on here, but I am really liking her. I'm really liking the columns behind her. Yeah, she's gonna have to sit off centered a little bit because we want to see that a little more, but ooh, yeah, I love her. I really like that column sticking out there. Yeah, I want that little curly edge. So that looks great, but we definitely need some color. But she is gonna be awesome. So I'm really liking this pink. That is very cool. What else do I have here? Uh, I don't think the chain train would be a right fit for this. So of course I got pulled away for a second there, but uh, I had to readjust my camera anyway. And just to make things a little easier, I cut out the columns so I could kind of see what I was doing a little better, see what would fit behind her a little more easily where she'd fit on the page. So let's look through some other pieces here. These are just off cuts and bits and bobs, you know, scraps that I have left. Thing from a tea label. <laughs> um, more black and white, really don't think that's appropriate. Kind of looking through here. Ooh, I like that piece. That's great. Keeping that, that fits our theme. cards from a moon zombie show. <laughs> yeah, I'm really not thinking, I have a lot of botanical stuff and I'm really not feeling that for this one. So I don't think this is the appropriate box. Let's keep looking. This is strips of things, little bits of border, um, anything like that that I have, a couple of border sticker packs. Books could be good. Uh, a little bit of hardwood look. Nah, it's not really what we're looking for. Lots of florals again. Like that just seems to be what ends up in all these packs. Some music sheets. Eh, not really. We'll keep the books. Books might be interesting. I think I like the pink. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut that out real fast and see how that looks behind it. Okay, so I got the pink and yeah, it's definitely got a good contrast and let's see where we want her. We can lose that little bit of corner. That's no big deal. And if we tuck it there, do we want to show the little bit of script there? I don't 
I, I want that iconic order at the top. I, I really want that. So I think, yeah, we'll just tuck it there. That looks really good. I like it. I think we need a little more something right here. Oh my god, did you see this little frog? Oh my gosh. That's so cute. So yeah, we need a little something. So let me get my tiny cuts. And see here. I I kept trying to catch if I was in frame or not. But uh, it was like too high. So if I ever drift out of frame, that's why. I'm going to get a better setup. I definitely think so. More books. Books doesn't seem... Mm. Too much is covering the frog. The frog is too important. A little label maybe? Ooh, a label's not bad. Kind of like that. What else we got? Ooh, the, oh, I like the red. The red is better. I like the compass. I kind of like that. Keep digging, keep digging. This is this is like 80% of the job is digging through the crap you've already cut out. Not that one. The tan is fine. It's just like it, it's not quite enough contrast for as beige as everything is. Oh my gosh, look what I just found. Come here, get you get out of the thing. A little Vitruvian man with the red. Oh, it's perfect. I think that's going to be our front cover. Okay. So. I think that is a cutout from Vibe Vintage on Etsy. Uh, I think. Don't quote me on that one. Uh, so I'm just going to use my glue stick and get this sucker glued down. And of course, I have to use something to keep my mat. And so, yeah, th th three day sale. Perfect. And I'm just going to be really good about getting the edges. And I'll probably have to go in and get a couple edges. But um, yeah, so I will get this all glued down. And I'll be right back. All right. So I got the front all glued down. And one thing I wanted to say was that you could um, like ink around the edges of your piece and like grunge it up a little bit. But because we have such clean lines, I don't think I'm going to. I'm d I might do around the edge of the whole piece just because we have a lot of layers coming together and it might just kind of like tie everything together around the edge. But our front is pretty well done. So inside cover. And... You basically just start the process over again. Like, start looking. What do you want the pieces to be? And I feel like, yeah, I feel like maybe using one of these would be really cool. I really like that sextant or machine or whatever is up there. Not super digging the big brown block. I don't know about that. So if we put that there, can we find something to cover that blob? The blue and the brown could be kind of good together. Kind of like that. Could be a good use of that piece. Ooh, could use this thing. This looks really cool. Or a cutout from here. Ooh, the blue again. It's got that little bit of teal in it. That could be really great. I'm going to cut that out real quick. I'm just going to rough hack it out so we can look at it. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I like that color. I like that a lot. And, um, okay, so what can go with that, though? That's not a lot.
Maybe, maybe we can cover up some rest of it with some of these books. Where did I stick those? Damn me for cleaning up. I tucked them in here somewhere. There they are. Oh, the blue and the blue. Okay. And these books are cut out from Ink and Page, I believe. She does um, uh, weekly freebies uh, in the in her newsletter, and I grabbed them recently. And I got a bit of a book page out here to go with it. So I got that little spot. I'm liking the books, actually. The books are, are surprising me how much I like them. Uh, you can see, I'm like, no. I don't like text that goes sideways. I don't like text that goes sideways. I get that some people don't care, but it's a book. It would bother me. Back into the box. What else we got here? Oh, a little bit of a... A little bit from an old um, magazine. Uh, I think the magazine is about photography and like improving your photographs. Let's let's rip this edge a little bit so it's not such a obvious just square chunk in there. This way the text will be in the right direction too, which is nice. Okay, let's see. Let's see what I'm doing. It's too white. It is far too white. Uh, it will stand out like a sore thumb. So let's let's uh, tint it a little bit with my Distress Ink palette. Uh, it's vintage photo there in the corner, and I'm just gonna grab some ink here and try and make it a little less stark. Take off the worst of it there on a little piece of scrap paper, and then just. Uh, just, just to take, just to knock off the bright white. Uh, I'm not trying to go for a grungy look. I just don't want it to be super white. So, of course, I got pulled away again. It is Labor Day weekend here, and it's the only time I have to record something this long. Um, and, like, it's my day off. I want to do the things I enjoy. But uh, my dad was over, and... Uh, a couple cousins stop by and I'm like, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to help you find that bowl you're looking for or whatever. <laughs> right, so I kind of toned down the white and I did end up grunging the edge a little bit there to just make the, the ripped edge look a little purposeful. Uh, so now I think let's look at this all together. So got our paper background that actually looks perfect it doesn't it doesn't um, look too out of place uh, kind of blends in more as background which is kind of what I wanted it for like we've got enough going on here we don't need a ton of extra yeah and I like the way that circle is gonna hit on the kind of rounded edge I'm liking the little joy for two down there in the corner all right, so more gluing. I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I'm just putting on this last piece. And oh my gosh, it looks so good. Love it. I also like this glue because if you get a little over the edge, it will just like rub up and, and not be a big deal. And oh, I also wanted to say that I never cut things before I glue. Glue and then cut off the edges because you never, I can never get things the right size. I am not good at that. So there it is. And oh my gosh, it looks even better than I thought. Like, it's so good. This is awesome. So now we have a full front cover done. 
I like, uh, yeah, I really like the way that circle sits in that rounded edge. And yeah, I think they match, but are different enough. And yeah, so I'm gonna grunge the edge of this a little bit just to blend those layers of paper together. And I'm just gonna use a foam thing. And I'm using Vintage Photo again, nothing crazy. Just gonna get the edges. I like that that ended up looking like you ripped a page and can like see the page behind it. Like, I, I like how that turned out. It looked, it really came together pretty nicely. So then the last step of finishing a cover is to put the holes for the binder rings. So I'm just gonna use my uh, old one and just make a, a couple holes, but I'm also gonna measure here for you because I assume you don't have one already made that you can just trace, but once you're done one, oh my gosh. Uh, so the holes are about a half inch from the back edge and an inch down from the top and bottom. So as long as you're in roughly about that much, yeah. And it's really just enough space so that if you're, you know, moving things back and forth on the hoops, there is plenty of uh there's plenty of material there that it won't pull through and i'm just using a basic hole punch it can totally be done with a basic hole punch i really injured my wrist right before this like right before this the night before and so i you'll watch me struggle to even close the things and it's it's not that the uh the material's thick don't get me wrong like they but I am struggling to just clench my hand at all. And so I'm a, you can see me being really frustrated. I just about called my sister. She was doing something in the other room and I was like, I was just about ready to call her because I can't even clench it enough to keep the paper in. Uh, but I do it. I do it. And two handed, absolutely just like angrily. There it goes. It's not that it's that difficult. I was just like completely useless with one hand. Uh, I believe for the back I had to call Sarah. I had, I, I just was like, Sarah, I can't do it. So we'll go into the second one and I could just fast forward through it. But I mean, the fun of this is decorating, right? So... Now we get to think about decorating again. I brought this out a couple times and I want to use this paper. So we are going to do a side in this awesome blue. I love the color of it too. Like it's just so cool. Um, and I'm just gonna mark and, and rough chop a piece so I don't have to deal with this big piece of paper. But um, we are getting this train on there. I don't wanna use one of those guys. No, I want the locomotive. I want the locomotive part. Um, I love trains, love trains. And so um, this is like a an MDF like wooden kit that my sister got me. And it was so fun to put together. And they're really cute. Uh, they're from a seller on Etsy. I will link it below just for, just for fun and games. They make great little gifts. Can you tell this is like a crafty household?
and I'm just using my cutting mat to try and cut a semi straight line just so when I go to use this paper again next time I'm not dealing with wobbly lines. And look how great that looks. That looks, that is so, that is such a good background. So, loving that. Now, what do we want to do with it? Ooh, we could use more of this brown. The brown and the blue did look good. There's like a naked dude on that though, but I, I don't, I mean, he's very Greek, but I don't think he's very mathematical. Book page. Book page could be good. I like that August 1922 on the bottom there. Mm, keep digging. Keep digging. We need something. We need something, something. Keep looking through boxes. I have tons of boxes. I try and arrange my stuff by like size. So like when I'm looking for something, I, I'm not digging through like all kinds of tiny little things looking for stuff. So. Eh. Bees and books. Ooh, what's this one? Okay, that's pretty cool. I have this uh, old book about handwriting analysis. I think I'm gonna cut this like card out. Um, the book is truly insane. Uh, it was a great find at a thrift shop down in West Virginia. Um, but it's got a whole section on like the criminal homosexual and uh, the lying woman. And like, it is bonkers. But uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, from a time. Let's put it that way. Uh, so it's, it's got some really neat stuff, but it's got tons of different um, script in it for obvious reasons. Uh, so like, it is, uh, it's a really good like book to tear out of because it's got this great like handwriting and all kinds of it. So uh, yeah, I definitely want to use that little bit of card, especially with the stark white on this, the stark white looks great. Ooh, a little bit of this, uh, this guy, I think, yeah. All right, we're gonna chop this out real quick. And you guys are just gonna hang out with me. I definitely next time will try and just record as I go because it's so much easier than trying to pull later and match things up, but also like, then we can just hang out while I chop things out instead of zipping through things. I don't know. Uh, I think this is, this, uh, card is from a section on like presidential handwriting. So they were like analyzing how you can tell that, um, all the men that became presidents were, were like natural leaders from their handwriting and things like that. Uh, so like that's as executive mansion, Washington, like that's pretty cool though. Oh, and just a little bit of this tan. I want that 1887 to show through though. So. But I, I think that might honestly be enough. Like you don't need a crazy amount. Just put things together in a way that is pleasing. Do I want it on the, this, this is always the decision. Do I want it on the front, on the inside back cover or the outside back cover? And then I always get the direction confused. Uh, so looking, this would now be the outside back cover and yeah, I think I would like it on the outside. I would like that train to show. I want the train to show. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna grunge anything on this really because the white and the blue and the... Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue all this down. All right. I'm just trying to decide how I want this to, to fit exactly. So I've got like a straight line-ish 
looking thing. It helps that the whole train is covered in straight lines. So that's, that was really helpful. Um, I like that little swirl of something at the top of this uh, geometric shape as well. So I just use the butt end of my glue stick as like a, um, oh, uh, like some people use their bone folder or their, you know, a, a brayer, like a roller. Nope, the butt end of my glue stick does it every time. Snip. And yeah, there's our back cover, outside back cover done. Oh, got a little edge. Got a little edge. And yeah. Just make sure your corners are down when you're using a glue stick like this. So I think that side's done. I think that is pretty darn awesome. I'm still figuring out where things are in frame, aren't I? So that's hilarious. All right. Time for one more. Interior. I feel like I could use this other little half of this. Like this thing looks so cool. I can't make it look like it's folded over the edge, but uh, I really like that. Get out of here, sales thingy. So I, I don't wanna use too much of the same stuff though. So what do we want? The, bat, the inside to look like. Ooh, I got this other thing from Tim Holtz. Got the gears, got the washers and everything, kind of like that. Got the black gear, big gear, really like that big gear. I feel like with the blue on the other side, that'd be kind of a lot. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. And I kind of like that it would look the other half like it would look complete since you will actually technically be able to see these two kind of side by side doesn't have to do it that way but I could I'm liking that uh, globe I really like that you can see where this is supposed to be like a journal page so I'm just gonna probably whack that out and look at it Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so we've got a lot of empty edge to fill, but yeah, I do like this little geometric flower petal thing. We need something, maybe we'll put something behind to fill all that instead of like trying to find individual strips, like some, some background piece. Okay, maybe this cutout from earlier. Don't have to use it as a tag. Let me cut this out really quick and we'll see what we're dealing with. I definitely want to use that in something. All right. So we've got our piece here and let's see what this uh, kind of looks like. We'll turn it into something, something. Ooh, sideways writing, awful, awful. All right, so we pull that down instead. We can put our flower petal thing up here looking pretty square though I don't know mm -hmm. so this on the left here feels kind of like a lot so let me take a look here do we need something do we need a little I'm just rearranging things, trying to think. Okay, maybe we need a little thingy. So, do we need a little, oh, like 50 cents? It's cute, I like the laurel on it. Let me keep going through my tiny, 
This is um, a bunch of Tim Holtz uh, assorted ephemera, I think for his summer collection this year. Okay, I'm kind of liking this. I'm liking the blue. I'm liking the numbers. I, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it that it matches that little bit of turquoise splatter down there. I think that's just enough to like break up the wall of stuff on the left. I'm definitely going to trim down that um, large tag so I'm not wasting so much behind uh, the like postcard piece. Let me just like rip the edges here because I think that may might be enough of a thing. And who cares about this sideways text anyway? Nobody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to trim and glue down. Wiggling that around into the position I want it in. Rubbing away some excess glue. I love that glue stick. I am loving that. All right, let me just trim up my edges really quick. Because I am, uh, I don't know, who glues things on straight? Nobody. And I love these little cutter bee, bee uh, scissors, but I am hard on them. Like, people are like, oh, just be careful and they'll stay sharp forever. And I'm like, I, uh, cut through glue and all kinds of stuff uh, and uh, they actually stay sharp for a really long time. They're very nice like scissors for cutting small items. Uh, so I love them but I'm, I'm rough on them. Just trim up this last little piece. And we are done. That looks so good, guys. Like, I am... This might be one of my favorite books I've put together. And, um, so I cut so that my sister could punch the holes for me because I was really struggling with my wrist. Um, but now I've got... Uh, both sides completely done and it is done and it looks so good yeah this is definitely one of my favorite floss books um, it's just a theme I'm really enjoying lately this like cleaner vintage kind of thing um, I like the straight lines and the like uh, the, the I don't know the preciseness of it all uh, which is not bad for a cross stitch. So now I'm just going to hook these together with my uh, binder rings, jump rings, uh, whatever you call these. And boom, it is ready to be filled with floss away bags. Now the last thing I will have to do is put a closure on it. Um, and I mentioned at the front that um, you need some kind of ribbon or something. so. These are all bits of ribbon that I have from at Michael's. You can buy these, um, they're called like trim packages. So they're like a bunch of about two feet to three feet long pieces of a collection of ribbons. They're all, uh, all color. they usually come in like a theme like spring or uh, neutrals or metallics or something. And they give you all kinds of trim. And for someone who does a lot of small projects, I don't need 25 feet of a piece of ribbon, but I do need three feet of a lot of ribbon, of a lot of different types of ribbon. Um, and it's all kinds of trims. It'll be like pom-pom trim and all kinds of stuff. Um, so we could attach it in the front uh, with a piece of ephemera. We could attach it with Velcro. We could attach it um, this one I just like glued on the back and then it has the, put my 
front cover back on here so we can see what I'm talking about. And then it has just a piece of Velcro to hold it. Um, so you can do this kind of a couple different ways. There's, yeah, we can use all kinds of stash items to do this with. You can use an old watch band. Um, I think I'm gonna attach it in the back cause I don't wanna cover up that, uh, that woman. Like I love her so much. So I think I'm gonna attach, I really like this like pink ribbon too. It kind of matches that, um, that beigey color, you know, that kind of neutral color we've been using. Um, I'm just looking for a piece of ephemera to like cover up that little tab. So I'm looking through all my small pieces. I don't know why I'm holding it upside down to look at it. Don't. Ooh, ooh, this looks like almost like a little ticket. Looks like a little train ticket for three shillings. I think that'll be perfect. And yeah, now we finally thought to turn it right side up. And for the ribbon, I will use some super glue. I will use some super, I don't use gel super glue, use the liquid if you can, because it'll bond faster. And once I decide where I'm going, I'm also gonna take something like the tips of my scissors um, and I'm gonna rough up so that the, the glue has something to grab onto. Um, Cause that, that shiny paper might have trouble um, holding. Uh, I'm just gonna use a teeny tiny tab of super glue. And very carefully, try not to get it all over my fingers. And it will dry super fast as it soaks into the fabric of the ribbon. So in a couple seconds, I can glue something over it. And I've lost my little piece I was just talking about. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, yeah, found it. And so, yep, it can pretty much straight away be covered up with a little piece just so it's not open. It shouldn't fray because most of the Michael stuff is like already pre um, fixed, but yeah. that over and I try and make sure it's really um, down around the string so you'll see me like keep pushing in there so that it's really down yep. and I think that's all I'm gonna do um, I think I'm gonna have it close like a traveler's notebook or um, what is that's what they're called because I don't want to glue on that front. I think I'm gonna even leave it that long so I can get a nice bow. And I didn't leave myself enough here to, I'll, I'll put in a picture at the end of like it tied properly because I did not leave myself enough string here to do it. I gave up. I'm like, I can't. I, my freaking aunt's bothering me, so I better go. Yeah. You could, though, however, glue to the front as well, so you had two pieces, um, however you would like to finish it off. And yeah, that is a floss book. That is, uh, it is super simple. It, honestly, if I had been less interrupted, it would have taken me maybe an hour to do. And yeah, these are the Floss Away Organizer bags. Um, they totally fit perfectly. You can keep using the whole they punch in the, the slightly sturdier um, front, or I punch two holes in the back so that I said, like I said, I can open them and just reinforce with a little bit of tape. And you just load your book up and you're ready to go. It is all organized. You can find what you're looking for. You can even put like an index card at the front uh, with like a reference of like what numbers are in the book, um, something like that. Put it on the inside cover. There's lots of options. And this is like how I keep organized. It is both like fun and creative and I love it. So 
I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it fun and yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, going through this uh, crazy day of both recording in a different way as well as uh, trying something new with how I get this done. We'll see how it goes. It might not be the best video I've ever made, but uh, if you stuck around for it, I really appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful couple weeks. I'll be back with who knows what now. Lots of different things. So I'll see you. Stay safe. Stay sane. Bye, guys.